Welcome to Konaha Crush, a clandestine effort to exhaustively research and document events occurring in and around the village hidden in the leaves. I'm Ira. I'm Gwen. Hi. Hi. Hey, we're here. We've got a whole movie that we watched today. We watched a whole fucking movie. Yeah, that amounts to like, in this case, like 20 minutes more of anime than we we usually cover. Mm Mm-hmm. Shit, I, I, I was doing this bit. I forgot to do the thing where I asked, like, hey, well, were you up to anything this last week? How, how's it been? Um, I've, you know what? I've been okay. Uh, not a whole lot has been going on on the, uh, on the old Gwen front. Um, if anything, the only thing worth noting is that I got an electric kettle. Oh, hell yeah. That's, that's good, right? Yeah, I can make hot drinks. Hot drinks? That's awesome. I just drink water all the time. Okay, but imagine if you could change the temperature of that water um, I, up. I don't really want to drink hot water generally. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe my this is my unrefined palate or whatever. But uh... yeah, I mean, like I, I I just got it from like a family member who like didn't want it. Come come winter, it, it is definitely going to be appreciated. So uh, that's that's how you know like nothing is going on in my life that I just like talked for a talked for a couple minutes about having an electric kettle that I'm not even using yet. Yeah, I mean I haven't uh, done shit either. I don't think um, I don't even get electric kettle. So like I was just, I was I've basically just been hanging out this last week, you know. Yeah, yeah. Some weeks are just for hanging out, and you don't watch much anime or like read any manga, and that's okay. You just watch like a Naruto movie. Yeah, we just watched a goddamn Naruto movie. We like podcasted about Dot Hack. Ooh, we did podcast about Dot Hack. This is a good time to uh, shout that out. Hey, we have like a bonus podcast on our Patreon, patreon.com slash Konoha Crush, all one word, Konoha Crush. Uh, go check that out for five bucks. It's like a it's like a really good one, actually. Yeah, I'm like feeling pretty good about that as I'm like going through and editing this like before I before I recorded today, so like, you know. Mm-hmm. We're getting the plugs in early this time, or at least that one. Yeah, I mean, like, it's got gender in it and gay, so, like, what more could you want? It's even got gaming. It's even got gaming! But yeah, I mean, I, I guess this is probably a sign that we don't have a ton more to cover in this first segment. Should we get into the movie? Yeah, let's get into the movie. Okay, let's go. Naruto the Movie. Ninja Clash in the Land of Snow. Team Seven's at a movie theater watching a film about a princess with rainbow chakra. Naruto gets too excited at the movie and gets them all kicked out. Outside the theater, they wait for Kakashi when the princess from the movie passes by on horseback, pursued by a bunch of horse goons. The gang moves to help her out. Sakura and Sasuke take out most of the guys, only to find out that they're the client for the new mission. Naruto catches up to the princess. She attempts to flee and crashes her horse around a bunch of kids that want her autograph. She turns them down coldly and storms off. Kakashi explains that their mission is to protect Yukie Fujikaze, the actress who plays Princess Gale. Turns out the next movie is being filmed in the Land of Snow, and the film crew needs some help keeping everyone safe. Naruto keeps following Yukie and gets pepper sprayed. This is our first movie, and as such, the, uh, the... Credits are like very long. I'm not going to go over all of it, um, but uh, it was directed by Tensai Okamura, who is like a talented director and like animator in his own right. Um, the closest connection I could draw between like him and Naruto is that he worked as the director of the Metarot anime over at B Train, uh, which is a show that Hirofumi Suzuki, one of the character designers for Naruto, um, worked on as like mechanical designer. Um, okay. So like you know, the, 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 there's like some, some connection there, and like so, and both uh, Hirofumi Suzuki and like Tokiyuki Matsutake, who uh, like had worked on Naruto like previously, and was also the character designer for Metarot, are here. So like you know, there's there's a little bit like connections there. Um, sure. Uh, the like original characters for this movie were like designed by Tetsuya Nishio, and then the uh, who who is like the other like main character designer for Naruto, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then it was like chief animation uh, supervised by Hiroto Tanaka, and then like. From there, there are, like, five more animation directors and, like, eight assistant animation directors and then, like, two effects and animation directors on top of that. Just a lot of people working on this movie. And I'm not going to go through all of them because it would just be a lot of me going, like, yeah, I, I you know, there, there's, like, probably some, like, work here, but I don't know enough to uh, to really, like, establish, like, a, 
a reasonable thing to say. And like me saying that like 13 times in a row would probably get pretty grating pretty quick. So I'm just going to say like, yeah, a lot of people work on this movie. Um, huge key anime list also, but like, I think I'm mostly just going to like run down like, you know, when I talk about a specific scene that I liked, if there's like a credit anime on that, I'll like, you know, talk about them there and like give some context there. Sounds good. Oh my god, this movie is so meta. <laughs> is it so meta? It's, a, it's got movie in it. It's got yeah. It's it starts when they're watching a movie and like you don't you don't know it's a movie until a little bit in unless you're like hey wait a minute Naruto usually has more colors than this what's going on <laughs> yeah also Naruto's um, not here yeah Naruto that's weird that Naruto isn't here um, I mean you know you you have a cold open with a Naruto in it you know I, I bet you go a good like five minutes into your Naruto movie without having him show up mm-hmm. but we we get we get him pretty quick the the thing that like really like strikes me as like we get this like opening scene and it's like the the movie within a movie is like oh right okay this is like a fucking movie production you can tell that like this is just like a much more involved thing on all fronts because like there are so many like fabric folds and like these opening cuts of like the the movie within a movie yeah there's like so, there's just like such just like like ridiculous attention to detail like how the fabric is like fluttering in the wind and there's these like metal like samurai armor guys who like explode into a bunch of rings when they get hit They're, like are all like individually animated and go flying off just ridiculous shit yeah it looks amazing um, it's awesome it's awesome. It's like, oh wow, right. This this is what you can. This is what a thing that isn't made on like a weekly television animation like schedule is like. You know, they they they, they got people for this. They got like time for this. Um, you know, they're, they're watching the movie. Uh, they, I, I love that they're all like standing on the ceiling while they watch the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I love that this instantly makes the uh, the like theater manager be like, hey, you like totally stuck it. You're also gonna be standing on the fucking ceiling. Um, like Sasuke would be like, no, we we got tickets. It's okay. And Naruto gets them kicked out anyway. Um, you know, we get like a real brief like rundown of like, okay, who 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 are the characters in Naruto? Like, just in case you're like taking your kid to go see the Naruto movie, you don't know shit about it. So like, Naruto is like obviously he's like loud and brash, and he wants to be a Hokage. You know, we get that like out real quick. Mm-hmm. Um, Sakura likes uh, boys and Sasuke specifically. Yep, that's uh, that's kind of what they what they see fit to establish about her in this opening sequence. And like, because none of Sasuke is like deal is really in this movie he's just kind of like okay he's the aloof guy he doesn't say much like you you know established without like doing very much um yeah i i don't i don't think he even uses sharingan through the whole thing i don't think he does like kakashi does right yeah kakashi does sasuke just doesn't need it um so we, we get like a brief like mention of like how, how Kakashi is like late to show up to like meet with him after the movie. Um, yeah, because he's going because he's being sad about his dead friend. Right, he's being sad about his dead friend. They're not like the village in the leaves right now though, so I guess like he left him at the movie. It was like, hey, I'm gonna like go back home quick to like be sad <laughs> at my friend's grave. <laughs> uh huh. It's really just inevitably gonna be like later than usual, even. Um, yeah, he 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 sent them a day ahead. Yeah, so, and, you know, if, like, the the amount of, like, fabric folds, like, the increased detail of, like, just sort of, like, constant, like, you know, just, like, but, like, like the, the constant, like, like subtle and, like, like quiet movements and, like, the, the, this movie hadn't, like, tipped you off to, like, the fact, like, this is a movie and they're kind of showing off, uh, a bunch of horses show up, which is, like, the most, like, hey, <laughs> check this shit out that you can do if you're, like, hand animating something. Yeah. There's the there's the princess from the movie. She's on a horse and she's like running away from the villains from the movie. Yeah. Um it's a very tenuous setup for an action scene. Mm-hmm. Um it's not really clear. I mean like it, like the, the, you can sort of draw it like or sorry, crap. It's like not really clear why this is happening. Like you can sort of draw some Putin's like, oh like, you know, she's like trying to like run away or whatever. Um from like the, the from like the filming crew because they're like going to a place she doesn't want to go. Mm-hmm. but uh but like it, it doesn't really make sense that they would do like a horse chase through the center of town and like throw like cart racer power-ups at her um and just make a huge mess it, it, it doesn't it, you know I, i'm not like worried about it too much like whatever it, it's uh it, it is for the sake of like this big show-off scene and you know it looks pretty good they really drove these horses um but if i you know it's um Sasuke gets to stand on one. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Right. So the 
I mean, like, it, it looks pretty good. There's a few moments where, like, I have some questions about, like, what specifically is happening, right? Mm-hmm. Like, the, the the big thing is, like, there's a scene where, like, you know, what looks like the the princess, or, like, the actress who plays the princess is, like, you know, running away from everybody, like, all, like all, from all, like, the villains on her horse, and she, like, goes on some stairs, and, like, they throw some, like, fucking, like, car racer oil spill jars at her, and, like, her horse slips, and she falls, and then it's revealed that that's actually Sakura, right? Yeah. And, like, the, 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 there's a few questions I have about this, like, for, first of all, all of the, like, fake villains are, like, riding their horses down, like, this narrow path down the stairs to where there's the, like, slippery oil, and then all of their horses just kind of, like, disappear suddenly. Um, yeah, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Um, and the other thing is, like, what what is what is Sakura's horse here? Did she steal a horse? Did Sasuke turn into a horse for her? <laughs> <laughs> as part of, the, like, diversion strategy? I, yeah, I think Sasuke is the horse. Or, like, it's the only conclusion I can come to that, like, makes any sense is that Sasuke turns into the horse, right? Because, like, the horse, like, slips and falls over, and she falls off of it, and then, like, all, like most of the horses, like, in the scene disappear, uh, and then, like, Sasuke appears. Like, presumably Sasuke was the horse. Sasuke might have been all the horses, actually. Um, also, like, can I, can I fucking judge these fucking, these, these fucking stuntmen or whatever? Mm-hmm. Sure, absolutely. Like... You're trying to, like, go and fetch your, like, lead actress or whatever because she's running away from the set. Mm-hmm. And so you try to, like, make her horse fall? Yeah. The... Like, that kills people. There isn't, like, a safe way to make somebody's horse fall over with them on it. Yeah. Anyway, they're all, they're all like, swarming around the fake actress, and then it turns out it's actually Sakura, and she, like, activates lightning mode and defeats all of them off screen, Which is, I guess, pretty cool for her that she can activate lightning mode. But, mm-hmm. uh... Like I, I, I feel like I'm being like kind of a bitch about this when I think this like scene, like the actual like scene we're talking about, like looks really good. Yeah, it, um, it, it, it does, and I like. Like, the, there's just like a whole lot of like guys like moving around in the shot that were the point where it's like, wow, you, you really fucking drew all those people. There's like so much movement here. It's like so like you know, we even though there's some questions about like the the exact like mechanics of the scene, like the flow of the action, it's still like all very technically impressive. Also, sorry, I like totally cut you off. No, 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 no. I, I was just saying that like I, I appreciate that they're like trying to like have Sakura do something here, except they just had didn't didn't have anything to work with, and so she kind of just doesn't do anything. <laughs> Yeah, this scene up until the, uh, well, like, from the, like, horse oil spill tricks to, like, Sakura's lightning mode, um, was animated by Hisashi Eguchi, um, who's, like, kind of, like, formerly, like, a Dragon Ball guy who, like, just kind of, like, moved up to being, like, a, like, like in the tier of animators, like, mostly show up for, like, movies and stuff, like, sometimes it'll be, it'll be, like, on, like, big TV episodes or whatever, but, like, predominantly it's, like, yeah, okay, like, I feel like at most of these recent credits, like, okay, they, they just see up, like, a big movie or whatever, um, yeah. It's got to be a pretty good gag. Yeah. As far as, like, being, like, an like, animator dude goes, like, right? Ho- hopefully, you know. Um, like, I-, I know the per cut pay on a movie is, like, higher at least, which is, like, you know, I- if you're, like, one of those animators who's, like, doing, like, super intricate, like, high-intensity stuff, and, like, you can consistently get the movie work, it's, like, probably better for you than TV work, but, like... Yeah, and and, and it's got to be, like, nice knowing that, like, yeah, I can just be the guy that they come to to do all, the, like, the good-looking shit. It's, like, it's got to feel good. Yeah, so, uh, you know, the, the the whole, like, fake chase scene is, like, resolved. We, like, cut over to Naruto, who is, like, caught up to the fake princess. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh... Well, real, real princess. We'll get into real that. Real princess. We'll get into that. But, you know, like, the, the, she, she's not really the princess she's pretending to be. She's a different princess. Right. <laughs> um, uh, you know, we, we, we encounter, you know, the, like, classic, like, theatrical anime release based on like a long running shonen manga like he- here is the like emotional center of the movie character yeah um, yeah oh, you sounded like not thrilled about that Gwen we-, we-, we can talk about that a little bit later <laughs> yeah I mean so like yeah so obviously she starts out and she's like kind of at odds with Naruto right like she like Naruto wants her to be nice and she doesn't want to be nice uh, you know she-, she she's like kind of like running off and like everybody's like bothering for her for autographs and like she doesn't want to like give a bunch of people autographs like which is like i think that's fine i think that's normal more or less um mm-hmm. uh but like obviously it's like supposed to be a sign of like oh she she doesn't like care enough i, 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 I guess i won't like get all the way into this till we get like a little further into the movie because like that's where like the uh the, the like full scope of that like really like becomes good like like you know that that is like the introduction to this character is like oh shit she's like 
a great actress, but she she doesn't actually care. She's like she she doesn't she doesn't like the fans. She doesn't uh, <laughs> she, she isn't nice to people. Yeah. She's totally different than she is in the movie, guys. What's up with that? What the hell? She's totally different than the nice princess in the movie. Uh, she totally ruined my idea of her. Can't believe this. Wow. Do you know how important that is? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, meanwhile, like back at the studio, uh, like Kakashi and Sakura and Sasuke are like kind of having like the, the the basic level of the plot of the movie explained to them. You know, they're going to like protect this uh, this film crew as they like go out to the land of snow, which is like, you know, it, it, it is a uh, a country where it is like winter all year round, right? Like, you know, it's, it's always cold. It's always snowy. It's always icy. Like, well, like one of the other things we learned about is that the former lord of the country, um, like apparently like basically bankrupted the nation like in pursuit of like a bunch of gadgets and shit yeah uh put put a pin in that for later Uh uh-huh but you know the the, the crew is just like very excited to be like going and like filming in this like super exciting location and they just need uh they they just need protection of these like cool strong ninjas to get them through it sucker is like fawning over all the actor men that are approaching Mm -hmm. uh and that's very fun and cool to watch yeah, she's just she's just so into boys, you know. She's just so into boy, like mo- moving forward when we get like past that little like here's introducing Sakura's character bit, like like th- throughout the rest of the movie, I actually like a lot of the stuff that they do with her character. Yeah, right. Like it's pretty understated, but like in this like first stretch of the movie, it's like so much like okay, you need to understand this about Sakura first and foremost. This is like the key thing, like more important than anything else, and then. Like, thankfully, they drop it, but also it's, like, weird that they forefront it so much when it's, like, not, like, a going concern throughout the movie. Yeah. Like, I'm pretty sure, like, none of these actor dudes, like, even really, like, appear again that much. Like, I certainly don't ever interact with her again. Yeah, they just, like, become background film solid guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, are we ready to, like, move on to the next section? Yeah. Yukie is at a bar getting sake drunk and looking at her cool necklace when Naruto storms in to give her shit about her attitude. She laughs him off, saying actors are the lowest of the low. The rest of Team 7 arrives with Yukie's attendant to beg her to board the ship to the Land of Snow. She refuses, so Kakashi knocks her out. Turns out a bunch of snow shinobi were listening in on the whole exchange, and recognize the necklace she has as the Hex Crystal, and identify her as really being someone named Koyuki Kazahana. They also seem to have a history with Kakashi. We see a young Koyuki meeting with her father. He has her stand in the middle of a circle of mirrors, saying she can see the future if she looks close. Yukie wakes up on the boat. She's pissed off, but they do some filming on the ship. The ship almost hits an iceberg, so the director wants to do some filming there. Too bad the snow ninja show up. Kakashi finally realizes who Yukie really is and squares off with Nadari Roga, the guy leading the squad. They're having trouble with the fight on account of the snow ninja's cool energy shield tech called Chakra Armor. Yukie is having flashbacks to her traumatic past and faints. Kakashi sinks the glacier with some big attacks to let everyone escape. So, so going back to the beginning of the segment, we have that scene in the bar, which, like, first and foremost, I want to say, is just, like, unbelievably good-looking. Like, it's just crazy. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I, like... No, just the, 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 the cut where there's, like, the, 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 the guy who turns out to be, like, secretly a snow shinobi in disguise or whatever, like, walking ominously toward her, and we just, like, follow his glove as his arm swings. It's insane. Yeah, where it's like, oh, yeah, here's, like, the fucking, like, painstakingly animated, like, the, the, like, folds on his pants, like, shifting as he, like, walks. It's it's just unbelievable. Like, all, all of, like, character acting throughout the scene is just, like, you, you, you know, the, the, the way, like, Yuki is just kind of, like, she, like, shifting around and, like, uh, you, you know, like, her, her posture is changing and she's, just, like, drunk and she's just kind of, like, trying to, like, blow everybody off. There's, like, a really great looking cut where she's, like, she's pulling her, like, necklace back into her shirt and she's kind of, like, fluffs up her hair and, like, 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 uh, you, you know, like, slides the necklace back in there in a way it looks, like, super natural, like, really impressive stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, th- this scene was animated by, uh, I need to, like, scroll down in my notes to the point where we're actually talking about this because I hadn't been scrolling down at all. So this scene is animated by uh, Takeshi Honda, who is like a key Gainax guy in the '90s. He was all over like some Ava stuff. Um, like he, like I believe he like worked on like basically everything Evangelion. Um, he was like character designer, like chief animation director on Deno Coil. He was like on like most of the notable like '90s OVAs and movies you can think of. Like if you like, just kind of like a complete legend. Like if you go into like Soccer Guru and like search for Takeshi Honda, there's just like 300 entries, like completely insane looking shit. Um, yeah, but like also this like two and a half minute scene straight that he animates is like a pretty good argument on its own. It's just like 
kind of unbelievable. Um, I, I feel like part of my like grand theory of like what like shown in anime spinoff movies are like is that you know in, in most cases um, the best most interesting looking animation in the movie will not be into like climatic climactic action stuff. Mm-hmm. And if you're like really lucky, it won't even be in a fight scene at all. And like I think that's basically what happens here. Like you know, there's a real argument that this is like the best looking scene in the movie. Totally. It's like you know, the the scene looks great. Um, but then we have to talk about what actually happens in the scene. Yeah. Which is where you know I, I get a little less enthusiastic. Um, character of like Yukie or like Koyuki, I guess, is like I, I feel like winds up feeling really weird throughout this movie in the sense that like so much of the ways she's feeling just seem really normal to me. And then, like, everybody gets pissed at her because, like, hey, we only have 80 minutes. We need you to wrap this shit up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Like, I mean, th- th- there is an extent to which, like, before we know about it, she can be, she can come off as being kind of, like, weird and cagey. Mm-hmm. But, like, we learn about it pretty fast. Yeah. Um, and it's like, sure, I mean, like, it, it, it would be great if she could be, like, happier about uh like you know her the, the the job that she has or whatever like sure it'd be great if everybody was like happy about the job they had but like everybody treats this like huge betrayal and like that, that she's like you know betraying the rest of the crew and like potentially like ruining the movie by like not going to this place she doesn't want to go to and it's like it's just a movie guys it's, it's just a movie you can't like knock somebody out and kidnap them to like another country because you want them to be in your movie guys oh okay oh, you not do that <laughs> Because I would like Kakashi could do that. It, it it drives me fucking crazy that Kakashi, Kakashi just like pulls out the showering gun, like knocks her out, and like puts her on a boat without her knowing. It's like what is going on here? I mean, like it's the mission, right? Like, yeah, the the yeah. The, the mission is to get Yukie to the land of snow, safe and sound. I guess so. And that includes acting against Yukie's best interest because Yukie is not the client. Yeah, yeah, I suppose that's true. Also, I don't think I want to touch on this scene, which is, like, something that, like, kept, like, like scratching at the back of my mind through this entire movie, is that, like, it's so weird to me that at no point, like, even as a visual parallel, is it drawn attention to the fact that Naruto also has, like, a weird special crystal necklace? Yeah, no, don't worry about that. <laughs> like, it's fine, right? Like, it's not, it's not like, a, like a huge, like, glaring hole in the plot. It just, like, feels like, it feels weird to have, like, the new, like, mysterious character with her, like, mystery crystal necklace, and, like, the, the like... Like I mean, nobody acknowledges that Naruto also has one. It would be so good if, like, or early in the movie, right? Like, may- like maybe at the bar scene, or like back when she was still like by the water, right? Uh huh. When Naruto first came up to her, she was like looking at. If she was looking at her necklace, Naruto was just like, "Hey, look, I have one too." Right, like, like, like she's like fidgety with it. He like pulls out his and starts like fidgety with it, with it too, to like try and like establish some sort of bond. <laughs> right. And then that, that 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 could be like a fun thing where she could like you know be like cold and brush him off for, for like too right like that could be like a mm-hmm. that could be a thing but like yeah no I mean it's 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 not that big of a deal either way right? yeah like like, it, like it, it, in terms of this movie's issues it is like a complete non-issue it's just something that I couldn't go without mentioning yeah but, you know she 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 gets knocked out and kidnapped to like be taken to fucking snow country yep. And, and meanwhile, we have the, like, ominous villain scene as they, uh, you know, they, they talk about their schemes vaguely. They talk about how, like, uh, she has the hex crystal and K- Kakashi is coming back. And uh, one of them's like, ah, oh, I'll, I'll finally be able to fight him again or whatever. Yeah. This movie winds up being kind of fascinating to me because it's, like, the only, like, Team 7 adventure Naruto movie. Because, like, you know, the, the, the like, window on that one is, like, rapidly closing. Um, <laughs> yeah. Like fucking, uh, like when we get back to the main show, Sasuke is like preparing to leave the village like ten episodes from now, mm-hmm. and, and so there's just, like this real rush to be like, okay, we need like Sasuke in here being like Naruto's bro. We need like we need to like make sure that Kakashi is like as the mentor to Team Seven has this, like history because you know, with the, you know we, we 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 need to like play all of the hits uh, of Team Seven and like there aren't like that many hits of Team Seven because they basically only go on one mission together in the show, but like they they need to hit them all real real quick, yeah. Can I just say, I really like the the Snow Shinobi designs. Yeah. The girl is so cute. There's something I was going to on here, too. Is like, I, I do like really, really like the designs here, and I really like all of like Tatsuya Nomichio's like, movie designs. I feel like they wind up being this like glimpse into the world where, uh, like, because Tetsuya Nishio was kind of like the guy that 
Masashi Kishimoto is copying. Uh-huh. They just wind up like meshing really well, even though they don't like necessarily look exactly like Naruto characters. So it's just kind of this window into the world where like Masashi Kishimoto drew like more different kinds of guys. Yeah. Like the thing, like the thing that really struck me, like with that, was like not just the um, you know the, the villain designs, but also like when we get the scene on the boat, there's just like all of these like different like film crew guys who are just like milling about the scene who are all like just like really distinct looking and all like look like they fit, even if they like don't look like anybody that like Kishimoto would draw. Yeah, totally. Yeah, so like Yuki wakes up on the boat after like having a dream about like a bunch of bad shit that happened in the past, mm-hmm. and she's like, "Hey, am I like it feels like I'm like a boat that's like rocking back and forth?" And like her manager's like, "Yep, that's right." And she's, like, super pissed about it. But, like, I guess it's, like, gracious enough to, like, still try and work under these conditions. And there's, like, a really weird scene to me where she's, like, you know, she's, like, filming on the boat, right? She's, like, doing a scene about, like, oh, this guy is dying. And she's, like, acting all sad. And, like, she, she, like, you know, everybody who's watching is, like, really moved by her acting. It's, like, whoa, it's like she's a totally different person than she is in real life. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the job. And then, like, you know, she, she like... T- tells them to cut because like she's like hey i, I you know I, I can't just make myself cry about this i need like my manager to like come and give me like teardrops so i can like cry on camera yeah you know so as like part of making a movie and like naruto and sakura who are watching these are just like weirdly disgusted by this yeah like it's not the most normal thing in the world <laughs> right like it's just like why, why what are you even upset about here like if she can't like make herself cry then like it just seems like this is a more reasonable thing to do rather than just uh have everybody like sit there with the camera rolling until like she's like okay no i can't do this like it, it just seems like a really like professional like hey okay this, this is what needs to happen so we can keep making the scene thing but it's like treated as this like huge betrayal of like something i, I don't know what yeah also like th- this also serves as the like introduction of the idea that like she hasn't been able to cry for 10 years because of trauma mm-hmm. oh, that's just really annoying to everybody yeah, and it's just so annoying to everybody, and it's such a breach of trust that she's not crying for real when the character cries in the movie. Yeah, that guy is, like, pretending to be dead for her and everything, and she's not even sad. <laughs> did did the people that made this movie not know what acting was? Not, I, I hope they did. <laughs> like, I understand that it's, like, a different, uh... It's, like, a different medium, sure, but, like... But, like, those guys are even less real, depending on how you look at it, right? Those are just drawings. <laughs> None of them are crying for real. Look, if you're not crying for real for the, like, 30 hours it takes for you to animate someone crying, <laughs> you're fucking fake. <sighs> so they come across a glacier. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everybody's, like, really annoyed about the glacier until, like, the director looks at it and is like, Oh, shit. This is, like, an awesome place to film a scene of a movie. Everybody get off the fucking boat. Yeah, I mean, fair. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the dang snow ninja are there. Oh my god, the snow ninja are there. They're gonna attack. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we get to, like... This, this is another classic part of, like, the Shonen anime spinoff movie where, like, he, here's the villain squad for the movie. They show up. They all, like, do their, like, cool attacks and tricks. Um, you know, we learn about the, like, special thing that makes them strong and hard to defeat. They've got the chakra armor, which, uh, you know, enhances their jutsu and, like, blocks other people's jutsu. I want um, some. Yeah, it's pretty badass. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and we'll learn later that as long as I have the only one, I'm invincible. <laughs> uh, you know, like, there's like a really fun fight scene, you know? There's a lot of like, a lot of cool stuff. Like, the, the girl has her like wings that she's like flying around on. There's like the big guy, he has like a snowboard. Yeah, it's fucking badass. Um, yeah, um, fucking Nadare Roga, who is, is, he shows up and he's like, Ah, Kakashi, fight me! Just like we did back in the day, let's do animals at each other! <laughs> Just like a ridiculous guy he's like oh, he's like so excited for kakashi to do animals with him it's amazing <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have a single attack that isn't like uh making an animal out of ice and like shooting it at somebody and he gets like so disappointed when somebody does something with against with an attack that is not making an animal in return yeah and that's like basically his whole character was like that and like wanting to fight kakashi again but it's like all you need for him to be like a ridiculous cartoon man that i'm delighted to see every time Definitely. Um, did you catch that, like, the name of his, like, tiger technique specifically calls out that it's, like, for to use against a dragon? Oh my god. That's awesome. Yeah, because, the, the, you know, the, I, I just, like, really like a lot of the action here. Um, the bit I, like, want to especially call it is, like, re- really cool is, um, there's a bit where, like, Sasuke gets, like, imprisoned in ice, and he, like, substitutes out with, like, a like a lantern that has, like, a paper bomb on it, like, it explodes out, and, like, he does his, like, classic wire tricks where he's, like, having fire race down the wire, and then, like, the girl, like, spreads her wings to, like, get out of it. It's just, like, 
this like super snappy back and forth that has like this great sense of like how to use the like you know abilities that have been designed both for this film and like you know for these characters in general um the fire arm looks like super awesome uh yeah uh this this cut was animated like this bit was animated by uh masaki endo who is a uh, like another one of those anim- animators who like is largely at this point like a like movie tier animator guy right like you know he's uh like, like specifically he's worked on like a lot of the naruto movies like both as like a key animator but also as like you know sometimes he's working on like concept design stuff sometimes he's working on like layout design for like the movie you know he, he's like pretty involved with a lot of these um the, the big exception these days to like his movie work is that um he's been very like regularly present on the puzzle and dragons anime which is like i think one of the truly beautiful things about the anime industry as it stands today is that like every once in a while you get like a very very talented animator who is just like in constant rotation around like some children's anime you've never heard anybody talk about i think it's awesome yeah it's amazing i I also like meant to ask you you said that like in your summary that like this is when kakashi finally realizes like who yuki a really is yep I, i did not catch that like he didn't know before now yeah he didn't know Okay. All right. Well, so that, that, like, answers some of the questions I had about some stuff that happens later, but, like, raises some other ones. Yeah, like, how didn't he know? Yeah. I mean, it's been ten years. It's been ten years, but also... Yeah, he was there, but, like, one mission ten years ago. Yeah, but also, like, he's go- he's going back here, and, uh... I, I don't know. I mean, like, sure, whatever. It's, it's for, like, I guess it's, like... It's for, like, the broadest possible convenience of the plot, so, like, I guess it's fine. Well, I, look, 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 I haven't got resolved yet. I'm ready to move on if you are. Yeah, right. Kakashi tells the kids that Yuki is really the princess and rightful heir to the land of snow. Sendayu, her attendant, knew the whole time and used to work for her father and explains how he was killed and overthrown by his little brother Dodo. Kakashi was also there for some reason and helped the princess Koyuki escape. Sendayu wants Koyuki to take back the throne, but she super doesn't want to. Naruto scolds her about it, and the director thinks a real foreign succession dispute will make a pretty cool movie. Kakashi adds that since Dodo knows they're there now, the only real choice is to kill his ass first, or they'll keep getting attacked. Sendayu leads them to a resistance hideout. The caravan stops, and Koyuki is nowhere to be found. They go to search for her, and Naruto finds her passed out in the snow. They make their way back, and almost get run over by a snow shinobi train. Dodo's here, and Sendayu turns up with a bunch of resistance fighters but the train shoots volleys of kunai at them and they get slaughtered. The rest of Team 7 blows up the train, but the front detaches, and Dodo escapes. All right, so we, we get the picture of like what, what's like really going on in this mission now, right? Like, um, it's uh, it, we're, we're kind of like replaying the beat from like the Land of Waves arc, where it's like, oh shit, you know, there's actually like a much a much bigger thing at stake here, you know, that this whole like country has been like overthrown, we have to like get involved with that, um, and we can't go back and ask for help. Because uh, Kakashi didn't realize what was happening here until just now. Doesn't he, like, basically say, like, eh, we could go back for help, but I don't want to. I, I guess he does basically that. Like, yeah, like, basically I was like, we could go back for help, but, like, there's only 45 minutes left in this movie, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, like, Kakashi's basically just like, I don't feel like it, and these kids are strong. We can do it. Yeah, it's fine. Well, well it'll work out. Uh, yeah, overthrowing government, that'll be, <laughs> that'll be a good test for my 12-year-olds. Yeah, just uh, just regular. I mean, they did it before. Like that guy wasn't like a ninja or anything, but like he had a guy working for him. Like, n- n- like neither of the two boys in my squad knew like super attacks back then. So like now this will be a fucking piece of cake. Yeah, now, now they have their big attacks. Koyuki is obviously not happy about the fact that um, her her life has been orchestrated to like put her back in the situation she fucking hates being in. Um, you know, they they just kind of like thrown her into the fucking trauma blender and been like, hey, we'll fucking like figure it out and like make it work. Mm-hmm. Um. And everybody's, like, super bad about her for this. <laughs> yeah, I don't know fucking why. Right, like, she seems, like, pretty clearly the party who's been, like, wronged here, right? Like, you know, maybe she could, like, come to want this, but I feel like you you don't just sort of, like... Maybe she just wanted to, like, live a nice, peaceful life as an actress. Yeah, like, that's fine, too. That's, like, you know, probably better than being, like, a monarch, uh, generally speaking. Yeah. But, like, you know, Naruto's like, ah, oh, you, you, you can't just fucking give up you can't spend it all on the dreams of all of the people who fucking like manipulated your life to bring you here the director starts like lecturing her about like ah, oh, you, you can do anything if you could, if, if you like, just believe but also like rings kind of hollow because like he was just talking about how like going and filming this movie that is now involved in like a real political dispute will be like great for his career so it, just, <laughs> it, 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 it seems pretty clear where his interests lie yeah but like i think we're also supposed to think you like a you know really like earnest sincere guy it's just hard to believe that. Yeah. 
Also, motherfucker director, you can't just like, you can't just decide to help out like a succession dispute because you want to make a movie about it as like a foreign, foreign, foreign entity, like foreign body, right? Like you can't. Also, like, hey, leave Shinobi. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> this is normal business for the leaf. Yeah, right. Like that's the problem, right? That's what the show is <laughs> like. Uh, they love to like perform coups and install new like, new leaders who are like you know align with their interests. Who like work with the like their like national film industry. <laughs> I guess. Uh, uh, I I don't really understand how Kuyuki's so mad about here. It just doesn't make any sense that she would be so uh, so ungracious about all of the fucking terrible shit everybody's doing to her in this movie. Yeah. You know they, uh, they, you know they, they keep moving. They like go to like what you what you say is a resistance hideout. Um, it's kind of just like a hill somewhere. No, they never actually made it to the resistance hideout. Okay, right. They, I mean, like, they, they, they were on the way and they got interrupted by the train. Right. Okay. I, I, I guess like what more to me to say here is like this illuminates like kind of a problem I have with this movie is that the only inhabited structure we see in the entire land of snow is like an evil castle. <laughs> yeah. And we don't really know, like, what stuff is like here. Like, I, we don't know, like, what the people who live here are, are up to, or, like, how they're affected by this. Yeah, um, if, if they made any effort to make it look like uh, Dodo was, like, being, like, a bad king or whatever. Right, but, like, the thing we know about the previous guy is that he, like, bankrupted his country in, like, pursuit of a bunch of, like, fancy gadgets. Yeah, but, like, it turned out that... Uh, but he was nice, Yeah, so. Yeah, but he was nice, and also it turns out the gadgets were cool, so... Yeah, the guy, well, the guy just went cool. We'll get to that. Like the the only people we see are like these resistance guys and like like who who just kind of you know they they, they hide out somewhere and like all all of Dodo's guys who live in this like big evil castle. Um, yeah, and there's just nothing fucking else. Uh, yeah, it's too fucking cold. Everyone's inside. Everyone's <laughs> inside. <laughs> they put their houses away for the winter. It's too cold to have the houses outside. <laughs> all right, Kiki runs off in the middle of all of this because like obviously it fucking sucks a lot um and naruto needs to like go off and like connect with her you know like finally get through to her give her his big speech about like how hard his life has been and how he's like persevered through all of it um you know it's the, the naruto thing or whatever especially like like, like condensed to like a like an ill-conceived movie form yeah my big problem here uh-huh is that like i feel like naruto's problems are fundamentally different way different Right, like he he's like coming in here and being like, yeah, I mean, like no, no nobody believed me, but I, I, I just like I, I overcame everything and like found real connections with other people. Right, like Koyuki's problem is that like everybody is like telling her to like do this shit that she like doesn't want to do and like endangers her and like you know p- puts her at risk of like like dying without achieving anything. Right, like <laughs> well, like like Nar- Naruto's issue is not that like everybody like. Not was not the, was not like everybody was telling him to be the Hokage, and then he like finally accepted to like he should be like try to be the Hokage when he grows up, right? Like it's completely it's it's like the opposite thing, basically. Yeah, totally not applicable. Like, it, it is just like the clumsiest possible time, like trying to like cram this like arc into the into the like one movie. But uh, you know, Naruto's like bringing her back, and uh, he's like, you know, you, you you can't abandon your duty as like the the ruler of these people, um, or whatever, and almost gets hit by a train. Um, but because he can run really fast, you know, she, she, like, he starts to win her over. She starts to be like, oh, maybe I should not, uh, uh, maybe I should believe in something because this kid can run away from a train. Yeah, it Uh, it takes a lot of, um, it it takes a lot of being right to be able to outrun a train. (laughs) Yeah. Ideological, ideological correctness is stored in the leg muscles. Um, (laughs) So fucking true. The the, the train shows up, all, like, 50 of the Resistance guys, like, go to, like, try and fight the train and get instantly killed. Yeah, they just run straight to machine gun fire. It's amazing. (laughs) Like, pull out their, like, swords and spears and, like, ah, because the princess is here, we can't possibly lose. And, like, all fucking die like complete chubs. There's no reason for them to do this. I mean, you know, I guess it's, like, a big display to, like, uh, (laughs) like, pile enough trauma onto Koyuki that she'll be, like, fine. I'll be, I'll be queen. (laughs) I like, I like, I like the big kunai guns. The big kunai, like, the fact that the train just, like, shows up and, like, opens up and it is, like, a hundred fucking, like, kunai machine guns per train car all firing at the same time is, like, amazing. Yeah. That, yeah, and, like, it, it fires once and it's just, like, a sheet, like, a rectangle of kunai. Uh-huh. It's a, it's like, a hundred is probably lowballing it. Yeah, no, it's awesome. 
and and I, and I love when um Sindayo is like the last guy standing, but he's like hurt, right? Mm-hmm. And they just do like one final, just like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's so good. Yeah, like Sasuke fucking blocks it with the demon wind plus shuriken, so that guy can live like twenty seconds longer. No, he blocks out the demon wind shuriken because it looks badass. Okay, it does look badass. That's the main thing. It doesn't achieve anything, but it looks fucking badass. That guy would live long enough to like say some shit to Koyuki no matter what. I like really love how like you know the, the train like rolls off and like fucking like Kakashi and like Sakura are like prepared to like just like blow the shit out of it as it's like trying to drive away. Right, like they're doing like actual like ninja shit and like bombing out the bridges and like dropping an avalanche on it. It's fucking cool. Yeah, they do that shit a lot in this movie. It's amazing. The, 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 there's a lot of just like run by real fast, dropping a grenade. Right, it's so good. It's so good. Like far be it for me to complain about like two people yelling about their feelings while doing big attacks at each other. I love that shit. Yeah, but like when they do like actual like ninja shit in this movie, it's also like super fucking cool. Yeah. Hey, are, you, are you good to move on? Yeah, let's move on. Sendaya bleeds out in front of everyone, and Dodo shows back up with a blimp to grab Koyuki and destroy their vehicles. Naruto hitches a ride and interrupts Koyuki's meeting with her uncle. Naruto gets grabbed and knocked out before the snow shinobi put a chakra suppressing device on him. Koyuki hands the hex crystal over to Dodo, but it turns out Kakashi swapped it for a fake back on the boat. Naruto's hung up in ice jail across from Koyuki, and starts trying to file his way through his cuffs after she shares a little bit about her past. He drops the file out of reach. She tells him to give up, so he just muscles his way through the rest, fighting his way through the pain of the device on his chest to snap the weakened chain link. In his triumph, he reaches out for the electrified bars of his cell and passes out from the shock. The rest of Team 7 attack Dodo's compound. Some guards see Naruto on the ground and go in the cell to get a closer look. Naruto stops playing possum and knocks them out for their keys. Alright, so Koyuki having seen like 50 people die to achieve literally nothing and say it was in her name. Yeah. It's, like, kind of fucked up. Um, you know, she, she, like, goes over to Sandayu and she's like, Oh, princess, don't cry for me. She's like, bro, don't worry, I can't. I'm, like, too fucked up for that. You know, she, she, she's, like, going to, like, run away again and, and like, say, like, yeah, we, we should just go home. Like, 50 people just fucking died and achieved nothing. And we've got, like, four combatants and, like, a bunch of, like, film crew guys. Like, okay. we need to fucking get out of here and go home. We have four combatants, three of which are 12. Yeah. And Naruto's like, ah, you, you can't go home. This is your home. And it's like, no, I've, Naruto, I'm pretty sure you can move. I think that's real. Like, this, like, attempt to appeal to, like, national pride of his country, but that we, like, know basically nothing about other than, like, there's an evil castle full of guys and, like, 50 dead people. Yeah. But, you know, she, she, she's, like, she's, like, trying, like, before, like, you know, Naruto can, like, convince her to, like, stay or, like, before she can convince anybody else to leave, she gets, like, kidnapped by a fucking blimp. Um, I love Dodo just as the guy that shows up in, like, evil vehicles. <laughs> it's <like> awesome. <laughs> this guy, like, this guy kind of rules. I feel like he's, like, so close to making it work. He just needs to get that last step. Um, yeah, he needs, like, a big, like, fucking walker mech. That's not exactly the last time I was thinking of, but, like, that would probably help. Um, <laughs> or, like, that Naruto, like, like, you know, managed to, like, grab onto the blimp with a rope. He, like, storms the shadow clones, um, which goes poorly for him. There's, like, a great gag. I think it's like, is it like Roga who like brings him in, like tied up, and then they open up like a, like these bay doors in the in the uh, in in like the blimp, and there's like all the other Naruto Shadow clones like also tied up. Yeah, why'd they do that? Why did they just pop <laughs> I up? Don't, like I mean, obviously it's because it's very funny. Yeah, but, but like Dota starts talking about his plan here, and this this is where like, I'm like I, I I have I have some issues. Uh huh. Um, because he talks about like how he needs the hex crystal. To like go and like activate the like big like the last big machine that his brother built before he died. Then he shouldn't have killed him, dumbass. Because he thinks that the in the machine is contained enough money to like build the biggest army in the world. And at this point I'm just like, bro, just become an arms dealer. <laughs> <laughs> you have like energy shields. You've got, like, fucking technology that nobody else in the world has. Like, <laughs> I, I understand, like, maybe it would take some time to, like, get the capital, like, really get rolling, get the production going on the scale that you could, like, make a lot of money on. It has got to be easier than spending ten years believing that your brother bankrupted the country to, like, build a machine that hides, like, a secret second bigger reserve of money in. <laughs> Wait, is, is he just, like, the stupidest guy on the planet and he heard someone talking about how, like, his brother put all of the country's money into a big machine? He's like, oh my god, it's in that machine. <laughs> and like nobody can, like no, like there's like two, like oh, he's, he's the boss. I don't want to like correct him. And like maybe the machine will be like a cool weapon. I don't, I don't know. Like, 
Oh my god. But like, I, I, I just feel like if you have the, like, military technology that nobody ha- else in the world has, you're fucking good. You can just, like, work from that. You can just, like, build from there. Yeah, honestly. Also, I'm definitely going to steal some of this armor. Yeah, I, I mean, like, he's not fucking selling it, so, like, to his fucking loss, right? Um, so, like... Well, it's yours for the taking, I think. So Naruto gets a device. They put a device on him. Yeah, they put a, they put a device on him and send him to jail. Also, a really funny device to put on Naruto. Well, I mean, you know, it's, it's the classic device. Like, you know, it's the device you can only put on Naruto without, like, destroying the plot of the film. Because, like, you know, you can just break it by putting the, 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 box, the box tracker in it. Yeah. You know, not, like, I, I, I won't, like, fucking hold it, like... Again, on the scale of this movie's problems, I'm not going to, like, hold it, like, telegraphing its beats, like, very obviously to somebody who, like, knows anything about Naruto mm-hmm. against it. No, absolutely. Um, like, that's fine, you know? Like, we're all, we're all just waiting for that moment where the, where the fox tracker kick in and be like, hell yeah, the fox tracker's kicking in. Yeah, th- th- this was not a complaint. Mm-hmm. You know, I-, I was pointing it out and going, yeah, hooray, I can't wait for that to explode. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But, you know, in- until that happens, we get the, like... You know, it's it, it, we're at the part of the movie where it seems like everything is going badly. You know, Naruto's in jail, and uh, he's he, he's like trying to like break out, but he's dropped his, his the, the, like file. He's like cutting the chains with, and like Koyuki's also in jail, and she's like, "Oh, you should just give up." You know, there's there's nothing worth believing in or whatever. But uh, you know, th- th- this is a uh, this again a, a, a classic part of the formula of like you know these Naruto movies, basically really boring in all of them. Yeah, it's... because. Like, I don't know, it's just, like, very perfunctory. And, like, I'm already, like, I, I, I'm i already, like, so, like, at odds with the way that this movie is, like, presenting its, like, central conflict. That, like, you know, that, that this moment, like, oh, shit, are things going to go badly? Like, is, is both, like, impossible to really, like, buy into. And, like, is both, like, you know, like, 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 like it, it is, like, both too brief to feel like it means anything. And also, like, longer than I want it to be. Yeah. Because, like. No, obviously it's gonna be fine, right? And like we don't, we 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 don't need to like retread the like, oh, is is are 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 the characters gonna believe in Naruto? Right. I I feel like part of this movie is just like really suffering from the fact that we just came off of the like Tsunade arc where we were like so fucking like down on like how heavily um that arc like just like planted everything and like will people believe in Naruto or not? Uh, yeah. Which is you know it's it's own damn fault. They put it right next to each other. Yeah. But, uh, but but we see some more cool ninja shit when uh, Kakashi and Sakura and Sasuke attack the compound. Yeah, yeah, they're just like running out like the upper levels of like the like like running up on these like, like upper levels of like the the corridor and stuff, like fucking dropping bombs, like it's a goddamn Assassin's Creed level. It's sick. Yeah, it's awesome. Do you have a, do you have, do you have more to say about this part? Uh, no, not really. You want to move on? Okay. Yeah, I can move on. Naruto breaks Koyuki out, and they run into Kakashi. He returns to the Hex Crystal, and they make their way out with Sakura and Sasuke. Koyuki leads them to Dodo, and it looks like she's betrayed them when she instead turns on Dodo and sticks him with a knife. He's wearing chakra armor, though, so he's fine. Dodo grabs her and flies away. Naruto throws Koyuki a rope, but Dodo cuts it midair and drops Naruto down to the forest, where he runs into the film crew on a little cart. Dodo activates the big device in the Rainbow Glacier, and Sasuke and Sakura fight with the Snow Shinobi. Sakura sets up a trap, and with Sasuke's help, learns that Chakra Armor hates colliding with more Chakra Armor. Kakashi defeats Nidare, and the glacier around the big device starts to heat up. Okay, yeah. Uh, br- br- Briefly, that's sort of this, uh, this but you know, they were like, you know, Nar- Naruto's like broken out, and they like run to Kakashi, there's like a brief exchange of blows before like Kakashi like tears off his disguise. You know, like, again, I love I, I this is more like cool ninja shit, like, I, I get it, it's like completely unnecessary to wear like a physical disguise in the world of Naruto, however... It's like very cool to like tear off your cape, yeah, uh, and reveal that you're actually a guy. And like the, the like the really quick like exchange of blows between like Kakashi and Naruto before like Kakashi like calls. I was like, hey, hey, wait, 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 wait. It's like it, it's just like a, it's just like a nicely paced thing. Um, totally. God, speaking of capes, can we call out the fucking winter designs for these characters real quick? Oh yeah, absolutely. I like forgot to mention that. Totally. Totally forgot to mention that. Like I love their winter clothes so much. They look so good. Hell yeah, absolutely. I love capes. Everyone's got capes. Everyone's got capes. It's cool to give like everybody capes for the movie. It's cool to you know like slightly modify their outfits for the cold. It's just good shit. Yeah, Sakura's got like really cute arm warmers. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's 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 it basically. How's that basically? But like, like you know what? What more do you need? Yeah. You know, they, they all go up to like Doto's throne room, uh, and uh, you know Koyuki like does her like double fake out, where she's like, oh, I, I actually betrayed you, and then like she stabs him, and it's like. It's just kind of a mess, you know? Yeah, it's kind of a mess, and, like, honestly, bad bad form with that uh, knife situation, because, like, here, here's a little uh, tip 
to anybody who doesn't have like good weapon handling or like taijutsu or like uh knife skills necessarily knife training um when you're up against someone who is much stronger than you and uh you stab them and they start choking you fucking cut the fuck out of their wrists yeah i mean it's kind of got like fucking like sleeveless chakra armor even so like yeah so like the the thing about that is that there's actually no muscles in the hand it's all tendons leading into muscles that are in the forearm so if you cut the fuck out of their wrists you sever those tendons and they can't move their goddamn hands anymore and they can't fucking choke you that's that's good advice you know we're hosting the most practical naruto podcast on the internet i think yeah so like Um. you know like okay like i i she's just like an actress she's just like a princess you know whatever like you know obviously like you're getting choked out you don't necessarily have the like presence of mind uh unless you're like you you know you, you have training and you're like used to like situations where like things are going bad but like you know like I, like my thing with scene is more like <laughs> um sorry god <laughs> that's like completely discovered everything so like I, I i was very interested to listen to that i just you know i i, I want to be able to sorry no it's okay i'm just <laughs> go ahead right so, my, my thing with scene is more like I feel like it makes it weird to have her be this woman. Like, I, 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 I was just acting, actually. I, I, I actually, you know, first, like, yeah, I actually was, like, working for him. And then, actually, I wasn't working for him. And it's, like, she has this whole, like, tearful speech about, like, how, you know, I, I always knew that, like, going back to the land of, of snow would lead to me, like, you know, I, like, like I, I would die trying to do this. And I, I knew if I wanted, I figured if I was going to die, I wanted to at least be able to do this. And it's, like, when is the turning point? It, at that, at that, like, did, does this mean that at some point in this movie, like, she was just lying about the like central emotional conflict of the movie still existing, or 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 is it just like, I mean, like, like maybe maybe it's like like it, it, I, I don't know, like, I think she's just embarrassed that she's gonna get killed after stabbing the guy and had to like save face, so she got like her acting 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 mask back okay. on. Okay, she just made some shit up. Yeah. Okay. All right. And like you know, maybe it was just like a, she she made this like decision like very recently or whatever. But it's like I don't know. It, it feels like an unnecessary like muddling of like what is already like a super like unclear character arc about everybody like just sort of like d- controlling this girl's life until she does what they want. Yep. Um, to have her be like, I, actually, I like wanted to this the whole time, maybe, but like maybe she didn't. But like, <laughs> it's just a fucking mess. She's like being strangled and like Naruto's like, no, don't die. It, it, it's like cowardly to try and like achieve what you want and die through it. And it's like, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know what choice she has at this point. Yeah, then go help her not be strangled, <laughs> idiot. Anyway, she should have cut the fuck out of his wrists. She should have got the fuck out of his wrists, but like, e- even though she didn't do that, fortunately, Doto doesn't seem to actually want to kill her at all. Um, just kind of decides he's done strangling her and like flies off with her in tow. And so the castle starts collapsing, and everybody needs to like run off to like do their individual fights and like go to like the place where the movie is going to end. Yep. <laughs> yeah, Nar- Naruto gets dropped and runs into the movie guys in the little cart. Yeah, like don't worry, we'll we'll like keep we'll keep going with you. We'll 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 take you there. Um. Because they, they, they've been, like, filming all of this shit. I don't know what the fucking movie they're going to make is going to be like at the end of this, but, like... I mean, it's 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 got to be closer to a documentary, right? Yeah, probably. But, like, they're probably going to cut out all of the parts about how they, like, kidnapped this woman. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you know, so, like, Naruto's, like, headed off towards, towards where the movie's going to end, but, like, you know... Sasuke and Sakura and Kakashi all have to, like, go do their bits, like, ambiguously somewhere else. Some amount of distance away from it. Yeah. I really, really, really like... The Sasuke and Sakura fight. Yeah, like, it's, it's, like, super brief and to the point. It's, like, super punchy. It is, like, the only expression of the thing I feel like we've talked about, like, repeatedly, where, like, you get this idea of Sakura as this person who has this, like, very, like, strong, like, base of knowledge and, like, you know, like, 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 like she, she, she has all of these, like, 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 she has this huge base of, like, th- these are the things that, like, you get tested on knowing at, like, fucking ninja school. She, like, knows all that shit. She has that all, like, down pat. So she, like, sets up this, like, fucking, like, cool plan real quick. She's like, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, like, Trick the, like bait this guy into a bunch of explosions. Hey, Sasuke, go like set up a trap over there because like I bet the fucking like flying girl's gonna be like at an angle where she'll get like knocked into these fucking branches and like go go into the trap you're setting up and like you'd be ready to follow up with that. And it's like we, we we just get this like you know it's like pretty understated, but we get like fucking like cool tactician soccer for like the only time ever. Yeah, it's amazing. Like what? It's that easy. It's that easy. Just make her do cool shit. Oh my god. And like e- even even the like. Even the thing that she is doing where she's, like, ineffective, or, like, seemingly, like, air quotes, ineffectively, like, throwing kunai at this guy that are, like, bouncing off of his chakra armor, right? And then, like, mm-hmm. but they're, like, little sacks full of, like, bomb confetti. Mm-hmm. It's so good. It's it's just cool. It's just fucking, like, you can just, you can just, like, think a little bit about how she could, like, be incorporated to the flow of the fight with the things that she's capable of doing. I, 
I, I, yeah. You could just do it. Yeah, it's this whole time it was possible to just do this. Yeah. Nobody was doing it. Yeah, no, no, no. It's actually really easy to make it like a character look like a really smart tactician because you just have to like make up some shit and then make them be uh-huh. right about it. Yeah. <laughs> right? Uh, like, you know, there's there's like a higher level of like plotting to make it like believable over a grand scale of time, but like in this moment it's just like super gratifying to see a soccer fucking do anything. And like do something in a way that is like in accordance with like the kind of things we're like told that she's like supposed to be able to do. Yeah. <sighs> Meanwhile, Kakashi is fighting uh, Nadori Roga, and Roga's like, Kakashi, let's do animals again! But Kakashi uh, has betrayed his trust, <laughs> um, and does the Chidori instead. <laughs> like, explodes his, his snow wolf and, like, hits him with the Chidori, which, like, seems to, like, fry the armor a little bit, but, like, nobody, like, call, draws attention to this. Yeah, it gets, like, a little bit overloaded. Mm-hmm. Uh, which I, I, guess, I guess it's, like, kind of, like, setting up the fact that, like, oh, like, so- like Sasuke's gonna, like, overload the, like, like, Doto's armor later. Yeah. Jory, right? So, you know, you know whatever. It, it is weird the thing that, like, draws so much more attention to, which is where, like, the chakra armor explodes when it collides with our chakra armor, like, never comes up again after, like, establishing that fact. Yeah, it does. But, like... Does it? Yep. Oh, shit. I, like, what am I forgetting? Sasuke. Later. Mm-hmm. When, when he cracks Dota's armor, he has the... He has, like, a... He has, like, the purple oh, orb in his shit. hand, right? And he hits... And he hits him with that first. Oh, I didn't realize that. Oh, my God. I, like, totally blanked on some shit. I feel like a fucking fool. I was, like, too busy, like... I don't know. Yeah, he's like well, he's like dual wielding. <laughs> you fucking show me up here. I feel like a fucking idiot. Yeah, yeah, but like Kakashi kicks him, kicks his ass. Hmm. Fucking like pile drives him to the ground. Uh, I I want to like call attention to a thing with uh not only Rogus Jutsu here, where um uh w- w- when he like summons the uh the, the ice like the snow wolves here. Uh-huh. Um, uh huh. Um, the, the Jutsu's name in Japanese is uh fucking not only Roga no Jutsu. <laughs> Um, so, which which the Naruto wiki has to helpfully say, he seemed to be overly arrogant, even naming one of his techniques after himself. However, his name did describe the technique rather accurately, <laughs> uh, because it can be read as a uh, wolf fang avalanche technique, which is like, yeah, okay, that is what's happening here. Yeah, he does make an avalanche of wolves. I, I think if you if your name can be like read such a way as like, yeah, here's like an avalanche of wolves, you fucking owe it to yourself <laughs> to make a jutsu like that. Yeah, no shit. I don't think that's arrogant. I think that's just fucking, like, good brand management. Yeah, I mean, that's why he decided to be, like, the, the, the snow animals guy. Absolutely. Like, he, he can't fight anywhere that isn't the land of snow, unfortunately, um, because, like... He can't make snow. Yeah, he can't make snow. Like, this is, like, a fucking point in the lore. Like, only the people who are, like, in the clan that Haku is from can, like, actually, like, make ice and snow and shit. So, like, th- there's, like, you know, like, a hastily applied, like, lore fix-it note to be like, yeah, uh, th- these techniques are, like, not really uh, ice release. They actually just are, like, done where there's, like, already snow there um, to-, to make snow animals and shit, which I think is beautiful. Yeah. But, like, as, as long as he's in a place where there's always snow, like, he's-, he's on top of the world, except for, like, if somebody decides to hit him with an attack. Wait, uh-oh. <laughs> oh, no. You ready to move on? I'm ready to move on. Okay. Naruto arrives with the film crew to rescue Koyuki. They get punched through the ice into the water below. Sasuke gets the drop on Dodo, wielding a chakra armor core in one hand and the Chidori in another. He manages to damage Dodo's armor. Naruto hears Sasuke call out to him and wakes up. Fox Chakra overwhelms the suppression device, and dozens of Naruto clones leap out of the water. Dodo takes them out, but is distracted long enough for the real Naruto to ready a Rasengan. Naruto's chakra reacts with the device in the glacier somehow, and turns rainbow, as Koyuki cheers him on. It connects with Dodo, and sends him flying into the device. The impact kicks the machine to life, and the whole country is wreathed in sudden warmth, as spring finally comes to the land of snow. The machine plays a holographic recording of Koyuki as a child in the mirror room, where she says that as well as a princess, it's her dream to become an actress. After the credits, we see Team 7 chatting with Koyuki at her coronation. Koyuki plans on being both a princess and an actress, and Kakashi notices the script she's reading is an adaptation of Jiraiya's horny book. Naruto regrets not getting an autograph, but Sasuke is a bro and has him covered. So, you know, Naruto like rushes in to like try and fight Doto, right? And uh, Doto is using his like special technique, which is like feels like Blizzard Dragon or something. I am not convinced that this thing is made out of ice, but like I, I guess it's branding. You know, if you're in the, if you're the land of snow, you have to have your fucking like fake ice jutsu. Yeah, it's. It's like a weird shadow dragon. It's like a weird shadow dragon, right? Like it's uh there's there's nothing really ice about it, but like fucking like hits Naruto dra- like directly, and like Naruto's like lying in the ground, but he gets back up. It's like actually that was like easy to get hit by, and I love that. So like fuck you. And he he he's in full on like get beat up enough to like make the fox angry. You have to wake up mode. Um, yeah. He gets punched into the water. 
you know, so Sasuke like shows up, does this thing that like the, the cool thing you know is not like totally blanked on. Um, you know, Naruto's fucking back. You know the fox wakes up just like we all are expecting. We do all cheer. You know it's awesome. Yeah, fuck um, yeah. The whole fucking the whole fucking like water here starts like glowing orange as he like bursts out of it, makes like a million shadow clones. Classic shit. What you love to see. Love to see it. The, the, a lot of shadow clones get like swept into like a big dragon tornado, but it's like fine because you just need like two Naruto's to make a Rasengan. And we we hit the beat. That's like this is how every Naruto movie ends. He makes the like special Rasengan for the movie. This time it's like a rainbow Rasengan. Mm-hmm. I feel I feel like I have a contractual obligation to call it the gay Rasengan. Um, of course, no, I've, absolutely. Uh, because because last episode has been called Rasengan. This episode has been called the gayer Rasengan. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yes. Uh, you know it's uh it's very much like, like what once the special Rasengan happens, like nothing the fucking like villain does can matter at all so like as naruto's like running in he does this like big like overwrought like tries to punch naruto too soon while naruto is like still out of range he's like oh shit why did i do that mm-hmm. yeah um, and then naruto punishes the whiff yeah i mean that's what you gotta do goes, goes fucking like um you know like it's the first thing go, goes like flying back i feel like in in basically every naruto movie where he like almost always has like a special rust hanging at the end of it yeah i am like i feel like these scenes are like basically never that cool <laughs> Like, you know, they look fine, but it's, like, it's never, like, a, the, the like a, an interesting, like, like a particular, like, interesting or exciting, like, showcase of animation by the movie standards. Yeah, or, like, a particular, like, cool or badass thing that the characters are doing. Yeah, it's just like, okay, well, they're, they're saying it is happening now. Yeah. Everybody, everybody cheer. Yeah. He, he goes flying back, he hits the machine, and, uh, the, the country gets warm. Now, I, I can't say for sure how this hits in the year 2004. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But to me, in the present day, like, going through this whole movie, like, I like, heard, like, oh yeah, the, the, the former feudal lord, like, you know, he, he, he bankrupted his country, like, built weird machines and shit. I was like, and, and, and like, the increased, like, promise, like, people talking about, like, oh, spring never comes to this country. And, like, you know, all of Koyuki's flashbacks about her dad be like, yeah, you know, one day, like, imagine spring will be here, you know, like, look into the future and you'll be able to see spring. I was just like, there was this, like, growing sense of disbelief, right? Like, as I, I kept thinking, like, they could not possibly be making a movie about, like, the good king who bankrupted his country to melt the ice caps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, it causes huge ecological, like, disaster. Yeah, right? Like, but, like, they are. That's what they're doing here. It's just like... Yeah, a, f- a fucking mass extinction event in the fucking land of snow. Uh-huh. Oh my it's god! Fine. There was like grass and flowers living under the snow. There's like different life here, I guess. It's uh, it's just raising too many questions very fast, and I just I can't really uh, the 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 imagery of the place that's always cold, having all the ice melt is like, I mean, you know, I, global warming was in the conversation in 2004, but for sure it is more so now. Yeah. At this point, it's impossible for me to go. They go, yay! It's like, oh no, <laughs> uh oh, <laughs> oh, that's not supposed to be happening. It's like super villain shit. <laughs> yeah. Should have fucking let should have fucking let Dodo keep being here. You know, I mean, like, sure, like maybe he's maybe he's not a great guy. I don't know. He like he he's not really uh, managing his resources particularly well. But like, I don't know that we have a case for like we don't really have any case for like anything that's going on in the uh, the land of snow. Other than like now, there's a new leader who likes the hidden leaf. That's what matters. That's what matters. <laughs> that's a win. That's the a win in the leaf's book, and uh, we all love the hidden leaf village. Um, so. Yeah, moral paragons. Yeah, absolutely. We can, we can we can celebrate that. We can you know we, we we can watch you know like we like Naruto can like watch this like big like sappy scene of like the guy like said like making this holographic recording in the past for like this big like contrived like emotional display to like his future daughter right and like like feel at peace as the credits start and this like you know kind of like relaxing down tempo song about like returning home is like a bittersweet thing. Not place. the fucking dumb it's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. You were like a, f- a few days before we recorded this. Like you were like, hey, by the way, you need to watch the credits in English. I was like, okay, yeah, sure. So I was like going over this movie again today in advance. I was like, yeah, okay. Once I get to the the credits, I'll like I'll like switch over to the English audio track and see what happens. And it was like being shot in the fucking face. <laughs> Like, this baffling, loud, like, blaring, like, like song of a guy, like, the, the fucking lyricist who's saying, like, rock the dragon for, like, Dragon Ball. Like, yelling, I should, like, never give up. He's gonna, like, fucking <laughs> move lightning fast like a hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> it 
just <laughs> the entire time this song is playing, just like this fucking gentle, peaceful, like looped footage of like some flowers swaying in the breeze. <laughs> One of the most like inexplicable energies I've like ever seen in my life. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> like oh my god please look this up please for the love of god like if you didn't if you're not watching along to the podcast that, that that's fine i'm sure plenty of you don't um you need to get your hands on this movie and you need to watch the credit sequence in english right like it's like aliens made it <laughs> <laughs> like they just not know what like the footage was gonna be <laughs> You know what the sequence is gonna be like? I was just like, yeah, make a make a song about like a like a, a cool boys fight for a cool boys fight anime, and uh, just that's that's all you need. That's the important part. <laughs> oh, it's so beautiful. <sighs> so uh, there's a scene after the credits of Koyuki's like coronation. There's like a big party being thrown about the new queen or whatever, mm-hmm. and it's just kind of like. R- wrapping up some horse shit like Sakura's a like oh, I'm, it, I'm, I'm so sad you're not gonna be an actress anymore but she's like fucking who said I wasn't gonna be an actress yeah I can be an actress and a fucking queen or whatever it's fine yeah it's it's fine you know the the, 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 the device isn't get, like it isn't permanent yet but we're gonna make it permanent we're gonna make it so there's never fucking ice here again <sighs> yeah and then Kakashi notices the script for like an adaptation of Jirai's book I, I it's, it's all very I do except like I do love uh Sasuke's bro moment here. Sasuke's bro moment is so fucking good. It's so fucking good. Like, this, this is, like, the one movie they get to make where, like, Sasuke is, like, a normal friend. Yeah. And they, they just really, they really, they really fucking, they really do it. They really get there. Yeah, and, like, what what a good thing to do to your rival, right? Just, like, get yeah. them the thing they want, like, but... <laughs> but it's, like, an embarrassing photo of you. Yeah, like, but kind of get their ass in the process. It's so yeah, good. Yeah, absolutely. It's perfect. It's like, a, it's an embarrassing, it's an embarrassing photo now, but like years later, like looking back on it, like, you know, it's, it's definitely the yeah. kind of thing that you would see, see and be like, oh, cause it's like Naruto unconscious in the hospital or whatever with, uh, with Koyuki, like kissing him on the cheek mm-hmm. after the big fight. Yeah. I mean, Sasuke doesn't think that far. I'd probably just like, yeah, I'm going to get his ass. He's going to hate seeing this picture. Yeah. 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 Obviously. Right. But like, you <laughs> like, know. Probably took it himself, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I guess that's the movie. That's the movie. What are we watching next week? Next week, we are watching episodes 98, 99, and 100. Woo! Yeah, and, you know, if you can't wait for that, you can check out our Patreon. Patreon.com slash Konoha Crush. All one word, Konoha Crush. But for just $3 a month, you get access to episodes up to a week early. And for 5 you get access to our bonus podcast that we talked about earlier. Narukai Uzumaki, where we talk about, like, isekai and shit. Uh, we just recorded Dot .hack. Um, a lot of fun. It was a, it's, it's probably, it's, I, I think it was a good one. Yeah. The poll isn't quite over for the next episode, but it's Danmachi, the Is It Wrong to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon, looks like it has, like, a pretty, pretty good lead. So, like, that's probably yeah. going to be it. Like, I'm not calling it quite yet, but, like, that's probably going to be it. Like, the, the, the counter Danmachi faction is going to, like, really have to rally together. Yeah. If they want to yeah. pull ahead. Uh, and, you know, hey, special thanks to our Journey to Your Patrons, Maple and Izzy, future Jinjiriki of the Six-Tailed Beast. Uh, any image that we talk about on the episode can be found on our Twitter, twitter.com slash Konoha Crush. All one word, Konoha Crush. We have a Tumblr also, uh, Konoha Crush Cast.tumblr.com. And I stream on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Guinevere Teef. G U I N E V E R E T E E F. Guinevere Teef. Um, there, it's like a lot of art streams. Like, I've been playing like Minecraft hardcore sometimes. And, uh, yeah, so on Fridays, uh, Ira and I are playing. Elden Ring, Seamless Co-op. Uh, it's a lot of fun. You know, come come check it out. Uh, do you have anything you want to shout out? Uh, still no. You know, like maybe one day, but like not right now. All right. One one last reminder to like, hey, if you like the show, feel free to like talk about it with your friends or anything. Like spread spread the word. We don't advertise or anything anywhere. So like, you know, it, 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 it'd be nice to get new listeners. And that means people that like the show talk about liking the show. So thanks for listening. And remember, there's no such thing as filler.